be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel is written to us by Matthew. When Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of King Herod, behold, Magi from the east arrived in Jerusalem, saying, Where is this newborn king of the Jews? We saw his star at its rising and have come to do him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was very troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. Assembling all the chief priests and the scribes of the people, he inquired of them where this Christ was to be born. They said, in Bethlehem of Judea. And thus it has been written through the prophet, and you, Bethlehem, land of Judah, You are by no means the least among the rulers of Judah, because from you shall come the ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and ascertained from them the time of the star's appearance. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go, search diligently for the child, And when you have found him, bring me word that I too may go and do him homage. After their audience with the king, they set out. And behold, the star that they had seen at its rising preceded them, until it came and it stopped over the place where the child lay. They were overjoyed at seeing the star. And on entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother. They prostrated themselves, and they did him homage. And when they returned, when they opened their treasures and offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they departed for their country by another route. This is the Gospel of the Lord. I'm sure I've said to you in the past that the literal, historical, did it really happen exactly that way level of Scripture is the least helpful, the least fruitful. It's a beautiful story. And I am willing to presume it happened in just that way. But that isn't the point. The symbolic level is the level filled with meaning that changes your life. Just to believe that three astrologers came from the east and bowed down is you all like the story, you're used to it, but you'll leave here unchanged, just believing that story. Now let's look at it it on the symbolic level. And there you'll find about 10 levels of meaning. I promise I won't give you all 10, but I'd like to give you a few. So what do we have first of all? Well, magi, literally astrologers. Of course, we've already changed it to wise men and wise guys and and three kings, none of which does it say. It says it's probably the word we would use today for scientists. In other words, really intelligent people. Hmm? That's the real symbolism here. And they're not just really intelligent people, but they're people from another country and another religion. They're clearly not Jews. So we have the crossing of boundaries, the crossing of lines to search for God. You know, I don't know how many of us, I hope you do, how many of us really see our lives as a search for God? Because I I think unless you're willing to go on some journeys and cross some boundaries and go beyond business as usual, it's very unlikely you're going to meet God in any profound way. If you're just on cruise control, well, this is what they do at Holy Family, let's go through it every week, bored to death, you're not going to find God. You have to cross some boundaries. You have to go into some new territory because God is always in a much larger field than we live our lives. So already there, we have a highly symbolic message. And we might say an inner religious message. 
that just because you belong to the right group, like Catholic, doesn't mean you get the point. So we have non-Jews here getting the point. Huh? And this story is being told to Jewish people. Do you get the subversive nature of the message? And we have very smart people. So it's not just for simple, uneducated folks, but in, as the shepherds might have symbolized last Sunday, but now we have very sophisticated people, and I think the word bowing down or showing homage is used three times in the text. So we have very sophisticated people bowing down before mystery. Usually, highly educated people aren't very good at bowing. <laughs> they like to stand straight and show that they're smart. But here we have smart people having humility. Now, uh, they seem to trust their deep intuitions, symbolized by the star, of course. They follow it outside their comfort zone into a new nation, into a different religion, and there they prostrate, them, prostrate themselves and do him homage. And they bring him gifts. And I think this would be the main point I'd like to make. That you only get gifts when you give gifts. <laughs> You're fed by what you feed. You receive where you give. And I would say over my 46 years as a priest, the most common thing I've heard from former Catholics, and I understand it, but they say the church didn't feed me, didn't get fed at the church. I usually don't say this, but I must admit, I sometimes think, did you ever feed the church? Did you ever do any ministry, any volunteerism, any help? No, well, <laughs> of course, <laughs> you only get where you give. And what these guys, these wise guys are modeling is you come with a seek to give yourself to something. What the human heart needs is someone, something to surrender to. That's why most of you got married, rightly so. You need one object of devotion. You need one that you can care for with all your heart. Maybe it became your children too. But unless you have a central star, a focus, something you can, as it were, show homage to, bow down before, love with all your heart and all your soul, frankly, your life has no center. It has no focus. Often when I get up and do my own morning prayer, I think, what do people do who don't have this? What do they wake up for each day? What do you wake up for each day? Hmm? Is it just to make some more money or, or to eat three good meals? Or, those are lovely. But that isn't enough to motivate your whole life. You finally have to say, what is it all for? <laughs> what do I exist for? And we have a limited amount of days. And by looking at this room, most of us are in the second half of that journey. I know I certainly am. Huh? You have a limited amount of days to be on this search. But I think we all have to ask ourselves in the presence of the three wise men, what is the wisdom in our life? What are we seeking? What is our star? What is our focus? What is our goal? What are you giving yourself to? Where do you want to give gifts? Because I can assure you, you will get only where you have given. You will be fed only by what you feed. You will receive only where you have first poured yourself out. And so this day is not just a sentimental story of something that might have happened this way 2,000 years ago. It's in fact a very practical and real process presented in beautiful story form about how the human heart is opened, how the mind finds its direction, its purpose, and its goal. 
And how beautiful that this is given to us right at the beginning of the church year. So now it's not just a sentimental story, but I hope sincerely a challenge to every one of you. Are you going outside your comfort zones to somewhere, somehow, give your life away? Then you're a wise man and a wise woman.